So how to understand the love of the Lord when he gives you more trial? In my personal life, I have more trial than anything else. Trial to have a baby, we cannot have. And we are here going to the temple, doing every single thing we are supposed to do. How to understand that? Okay, you're falling into a trap that I want everybody in this room to avoid. And that is, God must not love me if I suffer. I must be being penalized if I suffer. Can you see the danger of thinking that way? Every person I know in this book suffers. Peter, who was crucified upside down. James, the first Christian martyr from the New Testament. Paul beheaded. Now does God like Peter and James and John and Paul and Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Daniel, prophets of captivity, prophets of persecution, prophets of trouble and trials of every kind, who suffered more than anyone in time or eternity that we know of? The living son of the living God, the only perfect child who ever lived. Don't ever please please do not fall victim to the temptation to say well i guess god doesn't love me because what on earth would that say about his love for his only begotten son these are times for faith these are times for perseverance life is filled with times of trouble i just ask us to cling to the wonderful examples that we've had, starting with the Savior and going down through virtually every figure I know how to point out here. If there were any really picnic stories in here, I missed them. They must have taken them out of my edition because everyone in here is a hard story. And I think that's for a reason. That somehow, and this is the part that I don't fully understand and I don't ask you to just blissfully accept it and glide out of the room, but there is something at work in suffering that is exalting. Now that is not news anybody particularly wants to hear today, but I think it somehow must be doctrinal that suffering is exalting. I don't know whether that's because it makes us more patient with others. Does it make us more sympathetic with other people who've got troubles? Is it part of the expanding of our heart to where we're not smug and we're not self-centered and we're not trivial? I don't know. I think it's probably all of that, but it is hard to read these and it is impossible to read the life of the Savior without coming to the conclusion that suffering somehow is preparatory to exaltation. So hang on and say your prayers and trust in the Lord and lean against that pillar and know from Elder Holland as a promise to you apostolically today that it'll never be removed and someday, somewhere, sometime you'll have more children than you know what to do with. And I don't say that trivially, I say it prophetically, that with the eternal view and the long sketch of our plan of salvation, every blessing tenfold, a hundredfold, a thousandfold will be given to us. But I think probably only when we've worked off our rough edges and been ready to receive it.